Mission Junior High teens, leaders, adults, and other guests that are here tonight. Thank you for being here to celebrate the accomplishment of our teens. First of all, I want to thank our parents and guardians that are here for allowing us to be able to minister to your teens every Friday night, those that have been here in the past and those that are here right now. Over the years, we've been able to see some of our teens move from high school, from junior high to high school, and to different avenues in their lives. We are so proud that we were able to be a part of their lives for the years that they were here at junior high. And we hope that the ones that are here right now, when they leave, they'll come back and we'll see them again and they'll say, oh, I know you were, when, when I was uh, in junior high, that was like what, 10 years ago or something. You know, I don't know how many of us will still be here then, but hopefully it'll be a good amount. Uh, all right, to the graduates. Advancing from junior high to high school will be just one of the stepping stones in the course of your life. As you pass from one stepping stone to another, you're gonna face many challenges along the way. You will have to make many choices that will allow you to either stay on the path or abandon your dreams, and that choice is completely up to you. I know that each of you here tonight celebrating with you hope that you will be strong and successful in accomplishing those dreams and we wish you the very best in your future. Recently, we at junior high, we had our camp trip over the summer and Pastor Jeff asked me to speak on one of those days. And my sermon was basically, first of all, I was trying to encourage the teens to put their trust in God when dealing with any situation and secondly, to be confident that God will work in their situation. First of all, I want you guys to know that for sure. He will always work in your situation, no matter what you're facing. It doesn't look like it's working the first time. Do not stray from your trust in him. During my sermon, I asked each of the teens what they wanted to be when they grow up. Some of them responded by saying doctors and chefs and in the military, etc. A lot of different um, answers I got. I was amazed to see that the teens already knew what they wanted to be. But I was even more gratified to see the excitement that they all displayed when you asked them what they wanted to be. They all were raising their hands saying, I want to be this, I want to be that, you know. It was really amazing to see how excited they were about their future. We hope that each of you, including the other young people in the audience, will work hard to accomplish your dreams. These dreams are in your heart for a reason, and that reason is that God put those desires there in the first place. My mother always tells me to this day that from the time I was a little child, whenever she would ask me what I wanted to be when I grow up, she said I would respond by saying I wanted to be a doctor. Now that I'm an adult, she tells me that she had no idea how I was going to become a doctor because we lived in a small town in Central America when, I, when we were little. And being a doctor seemed like something out of our reach. However, as I said, God put those desires in your heart for a reason. And so over the years, my mother and father together worked really hard so that our family was able to move to the United States. My dad attended college and then eventually graduated from graduate school, which allowed him to acquire a job teaching math and statistics at ASU. I could go on and on and on about the struggles my parents had to endure to succeed. And I'm sure if we went around the room here and asked, or asked the adults here, about the sacrifices that they had to make for their families, they could tell you many stories. My parents wanted to help to provide a way for their kids to attend college and to achieve their dreams, and they did not want to have their children struggle the way that they did. Your families and the people in your lives are also making sacrifices so that you can accomplish your dreams. They work hard at their jobs to provide a good home and all the necessities in your life. So make sure that you take the time to thank these people in your lives for the opportunities that they're providing and the sacrifices they're making so that you yourselves don't have to make those struggles and sacrifices. You already a step up from, from everybody else, if you think about it. In other countries, in other parts of the world, you guys are already a step up. And your parents are doing an amazing job of providing for you. And you may not be wealthy or rich or something, but you guys have many opportunities, so you just have to go for it. I know that my parents, they gave up so many fun things that they could be doing in their lives, traveling, but their decision was we wanted to make sure that we provide for our children first. That was their decision. And I'm sure that if you talk to your parents, they may not tell you, but there's things in their lives that they would like to do as well. 
but they've decided that their family and their children are first. Currently, I conduct research at ASU. The work I do is pretty amazing. Each day I get to design new experiments that to help with different illnesses that affect our communities. Sometimes my experiments work and sometimes they don't. But these failed experiments help to develop my analytical and foster new ideas um, to think about stuff. I was looking on the internet to see about other people who struggle with their own work that they do, which I'm sure everyone else does. It was Thomas Edison, the inventor. They asked him about his work because he failed so many times in make, inventing the light bulb and different things. And he said, I have not failed once. I have discovered 10,000 ways that don't work. So that was his attitude to things not working. It wasn't that he gave up. It was like, oh, this way doesn't work? Well, let's try another way. He didn't fail. He didn't see it as a failure. And that's how you have to see things in life. Sometimes it doesn't work. If you give up, you'll never know the good things that are coming after. And the way that we respond to these failures help to develop our character and strengthen our future challenge, strengthen us for our future challenges. And when we do succeed in accomplishing our goals, it makes our triumphs even more incredible. In a short time, the next step in my future plan is to attend medical school. That way I would eventually be able to perform surgery in a hospital. At the same time, I would like to have my own research lab to make additional contributions to science and also make further discoveries. I know that I have many more years of college and training to accomplish these goals, but because this is what I feel is my dream, I will make the sacrifices to see them through. Each of you teenagers have, have a long journey ahead of you. Again, our desire is that you never give up on those dreams and stand firm for what you want. I want to leave you guys with one scripture that's been very important in my life. Philippians 4.13. It says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Every day, whenever something goes wrong in my life, whenever I'm struggling, whenever I don't understand why something's happened, or if I'm facing a situation and I really need help, I always turn to God and say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I have to remind myself that God is always in control and that his pathway to my dreams or goals and that are not necessarily my pathway. You know, I think that things should be done one way and I say, okay, God, this is the way that it should be done. And if we did it this way, we get there much faster. But sometimes you find out that God doesn't want it to be done that way. And he'll turn things around and put it his way. Like for me with my own life, the way that I had planned it out was I was going to graduate undergrad and then go straight to med school, not conduct research. That was not my plan. But for somehow, I, before I even applied to med school, I just decided to apply to graduate school. And I did, and I got in full, everything paid for. So I said, why not? Why not take the opportunity and do that? So I did, and I spent six years doing research. And then after six years, right now I'm doing two more years of research, and I have two more years after this. And then I have four years of med school, and then seven years of surgery training. So I have a lot of schooling yet, but this is what I want. And this is what I'm going to go for. And you guys, like I said, when well, some of you guys say chefs, some of you say doctors, being a doctor takes a lot of schooling. Four years of med school, four years of training. Uh, these, you, these things are not easy, I know that. But whatever it is that you have planned to do, don't give up on those things. Don't let people stray you away from those things, from what you want to do. And if it seems impossible, just know that as long as you trust God, that's what we keep teaching you guys here, trusting in God. It's not just something we say. It's something we believe. We really do believe that as long as you trust in God, it'll work. That's just how we see it. You know? The, sometimes I feel like the failures are just the way that it's God showing me, okay, I don't want you to do that thing. I want you to do this. So that's why. So it's not necessarily a failure. It's more of a lesson that I'm learning. But I do find that as long as I trust in him, I do get success in the end something does work out, and sometimes it works out even better than I could have ever imagined. Much better, you know? I hope that you guys have paid attention to what I'm saying. You guys get something out of it. At least don't give up on what you want to do in life. And like I said, this is just junior high. You have high school, college, and all this other stuff ahead of you. But just, you know, stay firm. And if you guys ever need encouragement, that's what we're here for. Even when you're gone, when you're gone to senior high, Pastor Wayne's there. When you, if you need, want to come back and talk to one of us, we're here to talk to you as well. 
every t every now and again we'll see our teens and at the grocery store or something we talk to them and say how are you guys doing you know what's going on they'll tell you about their lives they're so excited it was just so amazing when we had a reunion a uh, couple well, last year to see all these kids here talking about you know things that memories they had with you and sometimes you think do that even really make a difference in their lives and it's just amazing to see that that you do make a difference in their lives and it's just amazing when they tell you oh, I'm going to college right now or I'm doing this, or I'm going to the military or something. That's really amazing to see. And it's really encouraging to your parents to know that you are listening to them and you are taking advantage of the sacrifices that they're making. Because I, I tell you, my parents can be doing so many other things with their time and their money and their effort, but they choose not to do that. Because to them, making sure their children has a better life is the most important thing. So I hope that you guys, and then you can provide better for your kids, and you know, generations after that, things get better after that. But just make sure that you guys stay focused. And most important thing is keep your relationship with God first. That's the way I do things. I'll tell you what I do in my life, and I know that where I work is in the scientific community. These, some of these people don't believe in God. Most of them are evolutionists. They don't see things the way we do. So you can't go there and speak about God in front of them because they won't listen to you. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that in your heart you can't keep that relationship with God strong. So what I do every morning when I get to school is I usually get into work at 6.30 in the morning before everybody else does. And I say a prayer. This is my prayer. I say, God, can you help me with my experiments today? Do things the way you want. It may not always work, but sometimes it works out better in the end. You know, just your way. Do it the way you want. Before anybody else, I have the, the room to myself. And then when I leave in the evening, sometimes the experiments don't work that day. I get frustrated. But then sometimes at the end of the week, something else works out better. Who knows why that happens. But just make sure that in everything you do at school, you know, it's not hard to just close your eyes for one second and say, God, help me today. You don't have to have some complicated prayer. You don't have to have something complicated in your life. Just ask God to help you in everything you do. So thank you guys for allowing me to speak to you. I do pray that each of you will be successful in what you are setting out to do. And remember that you can do anything you want to do. I mean, like I said, look at my family, look at where we came from and where we are at. My mom could never have imagined we'd be where we are. All my sisters, all of them are doing great in college. But you know what? All you have to do is a lot of hard work. My parents tell us, you know, you make the sacrifices now, and then later you can enjoy all the benefits of it. Right now, we're making all these sacrifices. We could be out there. It, you know, in college, you have this idea of partying and stuff like that. We don't do that. We go to school, we go home, we do our homework. And then, what's going to happen in a couple of years? We'll each reap the benefits of our hard work. Right? Okay. Thank you, guys.